So Stephen, tell me about this building. I built the building about 20 years ago. It's uh, called the Waterfall Building, and it is uh, sort of a communitarian kind of social experiment. Very open, and we uh, built it to a very high standard. Um, but 20 years on, we discovered that we uh, were having some water leaks, some issues. Where were the leaks? What was happening? We didn't know exactly. It's all concrete, and as you probably are keenly aware, water on concrete can track and move around. It doesn't necessarily come through where, where it's cooling. And we had a uh, rubber membrane here. It's uh, one that was developed by actually a local roofing company. It was a very nice product. It was easy to apply. It had some of the characteristics that your product does. But one of the characteristics that it lacked was longevity. Also, it wasn't very good at being permanently underwater. And here in Vancouver, with the rain climate that we have, uh, there's a lot of water on roofs. Flat roofs, of course, tend to hold it. So that was our that, that was the source of the leak, really. Anton, you were brought in. What did you encounter when you showed up? Well, we were searching first for leaks in hallways underneath uh, the rooftops here. Uh, we encountered cavitating um, bubbles with water inside of them. When we started looking at the re-roofing of this building, we were doing it through the conventional sort of form where you find an engineering company, it's not really the best way, uh, and they come out and they look through everything and they assess the original drawings, and they come up with some kind of new plan, and a new plan on the new plan, and uh, figure out what way is the most efficient way to extract four or five times more money out of the Strata Corporation than they should, really, for the work that they're about to do. And that's exactly what happened here. And it, it, you know, I'm here, I still own a fair portion of this building, and it really upset me. So I got involved. And we started talking about what the materials that you guys uh, sell. And uh, it got me really interested. And so we sort of followed that down. Anton's not a roofer, okay? Anton, I mean, he works for a contractor that I deal with on other projects. Um, and, they, and one of the things that they do is strata maintenance, right? Condominium maintenance. As our maintenance supervisor in this building, he also supervised the re-roofing of the building. And got trained to do so. I got trained by you guys to do it. I mean, that's amazing. We have the guys who we pay every month to come and do the maintenance, who did the roofing and know where everything is. And, uh, uh, you know, and here they are, standing right here with us now, um, they're here as part of this building, permanently. So it's great. And that's exactly what we need to do for these strata buildings that are, you know, maintained by people who really don't know what they're doing. And that's one of the reasons why so many of the strata corporations get into pro trouble, because it's so expensive for them to move forward, and they really don't know what to do. I mean, this is a totally different model. And in this city, yeah. at this time, these roofing issues are paramount. It's the number one issue. And the stuff that you guys are doing is really going to help a lot of people. And we're trying to make that happen. I mean, we're talking to lots of people about this. It's a great resource. Yeah. And, and you've got a totally new industry in roofing, right? When you can get guys like this to do this stuff. And you tested it, right? In the beginning, you did a small area, is that correct? Oh yeah, we tested it, sure. And I tried to pull it off, and he gave me some things with it stuck on, and I took my torch on it, and, and you know, I put it in my dishwasher and let it run for, I don't know how long, like months, right? I mean, all the kind of stuff that you do with these things. And, uh, uh, and you know, it's like, oh, this stuff looks pretty good. We did a few sm small spot repairs, and they all worked. Yeah. And uh, when it became time to do bigger stuff, we had the right means to do it. There's obviously a bit of uh, practice in mixing and whatnot, uh, but once you get the hang of it, it's just a piece of cake, right? Uh, we just have to work around the dryness and the weather and working time. We did a lot of the work in the sunshine this summer, and then a little bit when it was cooler, so that changes the variables a little bit, but we knew that going in, so um, it's good. We just worked away at it and got better and better. And Eric, how, how, did, how did you involve, what, what were you, uh, what was your uh, sort of piece of this? I'm the distributor of the, the product here in Canada. So I got them on the training course, uh, came here several times, did patches, did a lot of mixing, did a lot of work, and finally we got the business. <laughs> you soldiered through all of them. Well, I was shocked when you said roughly $3 million from that traditional engineering, roofing, 
I would have floored me if I was an owner here. Of course. The, the highest the highest bid that we got to do all the roofs and the waterproofing down on the deck was six million dollars. This building cost about six million dollars to build in 1999. And just to give you the idea, this roof, that roof, and some significant patches that were done on that roof, including lifting everything up and putting it back down and replacing all the uh, all the uh, stack covers over here with brand new metal work and some other work, it was $134,000. Strata must have been happy. I, I hope they are. <laughs> I hope they are. What it's done is it's also allowed this strata to escape special levy hell and special levy records, you know, like which undermine value, I mean, and uh, and adopt this kind of maintenance is just part of the regular strata budgeting process.